shown above is the elevation of a right cone A, a sphere B and a right cylinder C which are in contact with each other. Draw the elevation and plan of the cone A and sphere B. So I'm going to come down about 120mm 120mm for my XY I'm just going to draw in the cone as here. So next up I'm going to just draw the plan of this cone here in plan and it's going to look like a circle. Circle is going to be really 40 so I'm just going to put in the plan here of my cone. Plan of my cone there. So this sphere B here is in its final position. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I know the center of sphere B is definitely going to be along that line there. I'm going to have to draw the sphere B out here to the side, bring it down to the plan and roll it around the front of the cone. So I'm going to bisect the angle here. This here is going to be dashed because it's, it's the top of the cone is going to hide the part of the sphere. The okay, next part of this question, draw the projections of a right cylinder C and show the projections of the point of contact between the cone and the cylinder. So. What's going to happen here is 
we have a new cylinder here and it's going to touch the sphere and it's also going to touch the cone and the cone is going to be located here we already have the cone so it's going to touch the cone somewhere around there and it's also going to touch the cylinder first thing you can say to yourself if the cylinder is touching the sphere in plan you will see two circles and both those circles will touch at a point so they touch at the edge so the first thing I can do I can draw a line out from the center and this point here is the point where the sphere and the cylinder touch at the edge and I'm going to bring that point up to my elevation and I get a point up there. Next step the radius of the cylinder is 30 mil so the center of the cylinder will always be 30 mil away from the edge of the sphere so I've added on 30 mil there and I'm going to swing an arc that there's 30 mil away from this edge here so the center cylinder is definitely on that red arc there so, so what, in this question what we have, we have a cone, a cylinder and we also have a sphere here at the front now what you'll notice is if you get this cylinder and bring it around the cone for a walk rotate the cylinder around the object what you'll actually end up with is a, a path you'll end up with a circle and that circle there is basically the path that that cone will make around that cone so that there is the radius of that circle there so by looking at this now you know that the center from this cylinder to that edge will be 30 mil So what I'm going to do is we're going to find this circle here, the path that the cylinder makes when it goes around the cone, and then we're going to have to add on 30 mil from that to get the center. So by bringing up this point here, that red line there that I'm after drawing, that there is the path that the cylinder would make if it went around, was to rotate around the cone. So I get the radius of this here now. And I rotate it around my object. And that red arc there represents that circle there. So next step then, I have to add on 30 mil from that edge there. Nice swing an arc from the center. those two arcs crossed, that's the position of my cylinder. I'm going to bring up the center up to my elevation
or if I just draw a line across, I can just fill up the cylinder. And this here is the height of my cylinder. Here. Ignore that there. So that there is my cylinder there, cylinder C. To get the point of contact, um, very very simple. I join the centers. I bring it straight up. Okay, the last part of the question says. Draw the traces of the plane which is tangential to the sphere B and is inclined at 75 degrees to the horizontal plane. This plane also touches the edge of the circular base of the inverted cone. So basically what's going to happen here, we're going to have to draw a cone over the sphere and the angle that base angle that cone is going to have to be 75 degrees. And we're also told to touch the edge of the circular cone, so we're going to just draw a partial cone underneath this here as well. What you notice is this cone would actually extend up here, up through the center like that. So that's the size of that cone there. It would actually be a large, a very large cone. So I draw two cones. Once you have those two cones drawn, if I was to rest the plane against those two cones, the plane would rest at 75 degrees. So now I just come along. The tangent is going to run along the bottom. So that's going to be T and H. And my vertical trace is running along like that. So that's the plane then that will rest. It will just touch the sphere and touch the edge of the cone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a 75 degree line here out to the side for construction purposes. Mark that point there. That's 75 degrees there. And I'm just going to copy that slope. That line there shows the cone there, and I'm going to do the same on the far side as well. So I bring down the radius of this cone here now. So 
So from here to here, that's my radius, and also from the center of the sphere out to here is also my radius. So I swing two arcs. So the circle I'm swinging now is actually the base of the ghost cones that I'm after drawing. And then I draw my tangent. Tangent is just going to touch off both of the base of these cones. That there's my horizontal trace. And to get my vertical trace, I can pick any point. So I'm going to pick this point here. I'm going to call it X, and here's X here in elevation. So, this is how I find the vertical trace. If I go parallel to the trace, straight up and straight across, I get a point on the vertical trace. And then I can join that back to T. That'll then be VTH. And that's my question complete.